Now, Thank you in so much. just a few minutes, the House is expected to vote on President Biden's Build Back Better bill. And joining us now, White House Domestic Policy Council Director Susan Rice. And it's good to have you, Susan. I think Joe just sold the bill here on the set. <laughs> not, 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 not trying to, but, <laughs> but, 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 but talk about uh, some of the things uh, the Build Back Better does. Well, good morning, uh, Mika and Joe. It's great to be back with you. Hi, everybody. The Build Back Better legislation, which the House will pass today, um, is going to lower costs for American families. It's going to create jobs in uh, important new industries such as clean energy. It's going to provide tax cuts for middle and working class Americans. It's going to help us tackle the climate crisis and increase our global competitiveness. It, you've talked about the elements, Joe uh, and Mika, reducing child care costs. Many American families pay as much as $15,000 per child per year for their child care. This legislation will cut child care costs in half for most American families and make sure that uh, they are not paying more than 7% of their income uh, for child care. You spoke about uh, prescription drugs. This legislation will ensure that seniors don't pay uh, as much as they are now, some $6,000 a year. Um, for their prescription drugs, that will be capped at $2,000 a year. For your son and others, Joe, that are relying on insulin, insulin is extraordinarily expensive, ridiculously expensive, exploitatively expensive. Uh, some people pay as much as $1,000 a month for their insulin. The cap will now be $35 a month. So these are just examples of the many ways in which this legislation will reduce costs, put money in the pockets uh, of ordinary Americans. The child tax cut, uh, child tax credit as we call it, um, will be extended. That means that if you're a family, a working middle class family, um, you will receive $300 per month uh, for every child under the age of six and $250 a month for every child six to, se uh, to 17. That is real tax break for working in middle class families. So this legislation uh, is historic, it's comprehensive, as you've pointed out, it's popular. Uh, universal pre-K for every three and four year old child in this country, helping us to expand our uh, education and make us more competitive. There's so much in here, I haven't even touched on all of it, uh, that will be transformational. And we're looking forward to the House passage and then on to the Senate. Well, I was going to ask you about that, Susan. Good morning. This will get through the House, we expect, uh, per perhaps within the hour. And then it swings over to the Senate, where it may be pared down a bit. As you talk to senators, as you talk to some of those Democrats who have been on the fence, who want to see some changes before they vote yes on this, what have those conversations been like? What may not make it through once this goes through the Senate? Well, let's, let's get it out of the House, and we will go back to the Senate, where, as you know, we've had extensive uh, consultations, negotiations, and engagements with uh, senators uh, of all parts uh, of the party, from uh, the most progressive uh, to uh, the most moderate. And when the president put forward uh, a few weeks ago his framework package, which he said he was confident could pass the Senate, it contained the elements that we believed um, were most viable. Um, and so there will be negotiations. Uh, there will certainly be um, some things that, that may be restructured or, or pared down. Um, but I, the fundamental elements of this, the health care, the child care, the prescription drugs, uh, the, the education provisions, the housing provisions, um, I am hopeful that uh, we will be able to, to sustain paid family and medical leave. These things are critically important for the American people. Um, and we're committed to getting as much of it through the Senate as we possibly can. And I think it'll be a, a very robust package on the other end. Good morning, Susan. It's uh, Jonathan Lemire. Great to see you. So much of, of course, the president's domestic agenda right now is tied in with concerns about inflation and the supply chain issues and rising consumer costs. Uh, you know, some have pointed to the president's impending uh, nomination of the next Fed chair, a delayed decision, which he, but we've been told it's coming in 
the next few days. We'll be send a signal as to where that may be going. But also in the tell, walk us through what now what the White House, the administration is trying to do to get their arms around this. We know about the the measure to keep the port of Long Beach open 24/7. But what else can be done here in these next few weeks as Americans prepare for the holiday season? What they, can be done to combat inflation uh, and to uh, some of these supply chain issues that are really worrying everyday Americans as they try to put food on their table and gas in their cars? Well, uh, good to talk to you, Jonathan. I think you know uh, that you know, what we are experiencing with inflation, which is real, is in fact a global phenomenon. Uh, the, the United States is, is facing its challenges. Europe uh, has higher inflation than it's had in, eight, uh, in 13 years. Canada, higher than in 18 years. Um, and our, yet it is our economy that has come back most robustly among uh, our competitors around the world. Um, and the only one that really has uh, largely gotten back to pre-pandemic levels. That said, there is a need uh, to reduce costs. And, and we are working, as you mentioned, on uh, the supply chain. We're working on um, reducing gasoline prices. Um, but the most important thing, as we've been discussing, that we can do in the very near term that will have a real impact uh, on the finances of Americans is to pass the Build Back Better legislation and enact it into law because that's where health care costs will be reduced, prescription drug costs, child care costs, which can consume ridiculous shares of an average family's income, education costs, housing costs, all of those are critical elements of this legislation. You bring those costs down, um, and, and that obviously is beneficial to the bottom line of the American family. You provide a tax cut for middle and working class Americans through the child tax credit, um, and you ask uh, the wealthiest corporations and families uh, to pay their fair share uh, and not to evade taxes, making sure that no family earning less than $400,000 a year sees one penny more uh, in their taxes. So that's why the Build Back Better legislation is so impactful and so urgent. Ambassador Rice, uh, is any chance that uh, you, this victory lap is a little premature. We do expect the Build Back Better Act to get through the House with the, with the most delicate, after the most delicate balancing acts between moderates and progressives in the House. But it then goes to the Senate. The Senate is sure to change it in some ways. Uh, if, and assuming the Senate manages to pass it, that new version, that revised version, will have to come back to the House. Is it? Or do you feel totally confident that it, the final version is going to reach? President Biden's desk? Well, Susan, first of all, you did not hear me say mission accomplished. You heard me say that <laughs> we are confident this will pass the House and go forward to uh, the Senate. But yes, if, if you're asking me, am I confident that uh, at the end of the day, uh, a robust package will emerge from the Senate, be uh, passed again by the House and signed by the President? The answer is yes. Um, but we have work to do, and we certainly don't take anything for granted. I've been in uh, the mix as we have worked through uh, th these uh, challenges and negotiations over uh, the last several weeks. I have no illusions about the complexities. But where we are is quite extraordinary. On Monday, the president signed into law a bipartisan infrastructure uh, piece of legislation that we have been waiting for years to be able to do, said it couldn't be done. No way you can bring Democrats and Republicans together and make the kinds of absolutely necessary transformative investments in our rail, in our roads, in our bridges, in our airports, in our broadband, in our clean water, things that we've been waiting for forever. And Joe Biden got it done. And now uh, we have a, an equally important and impactful uh, set of investments that will transform the lives of American families and make, uh, you know, child care and pre-K available to everybody uh, in an affordable way, enable first-time, first-time, first-generation home buyers to have the support they need to have an affordable home, enable those who are trying to afford college to have more support uh, to enable them to, to pay for college. Uh, this is an extraordinary and important uh, piece of legislation. Together, they will enhance our competitiveness, enable us to tackle the cr climate crisis, which is so urgent and so critical. Um, yep. And uh, I am confident that when all is said and done, uh, the president will be signing not just one, but two critical pieces of legislation. 
Director of the White House Domestic Policy Council, Susan Rice, thank you very much for being on this morning. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.